All right, on today's Fast Motorsports, we're coming at you with the little Bass Tracker. It's a Pro Team 175, all aluminum boat. I got really lucky on this one, I don't even want to say. It's got the Mer Mercury 60 on it. And it's been sitting probably eight or ten years or so, prop, nice little stainless and looks nice like the edges haven't hit anything yet. Skagging all on the foot's in real nice shape. Boat itself's in really nice shape. It just uh, needs a major cleaning and the carpet and stuff redone. So I threw a hot battery in it. Got my little jug over there because the gas has gone bad. And we're going to try to fire her up. Got some water there. Yeah. with the bad gas in the tank. Well, at least it will run. I do know that. So, I guess we'll uh, keep messing with it. We turn that water off. Yeah, till it works. Nice. <laughs> Woo! Now. All right. Pretty good so far. Guess I should... Go ahead and do another little walk around here, a before and after. Get the big <laughs> stuff growing in here and all. Let me get some of this out. We gotta get all this crap cleaned out because she's gonna make a nice boat again. Not real worried about that because guess what? I know somebody that does seats. Anyway, me and Jasper, we're going to get her fixed up. Yes, we are. So we can go out and go catch some fish, Jasper. <laughs> All right. All right, so I wanted to show you what's down in here. Mm, look at that. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Yeah, boy. A boat's best friend. Not. Nah. But the good thing is, as you can see with this bass tracker, she's all aluminum. Even under the carpet here, pulling up the carpet. Guess what? It's aluminum floor. All the locker lids and stuff are aluminum. So I'll give them that. They are a good built, well built boat. The bass tracker, I just wouldn't want to be out in a lightning storm. Yep. So on this one, we got it loose here and along the floor. It's got the hex bits, two rivets over here holding it in. We got to take this one out first so then we can get this box. And then we can take these side pieces off. But I'm about to take the driver's seat off first to see if any of this, this whole thing has got to come out. right there it goes all the way down through here one piece all the way around the bow so that's going to be the starboard side so definitely stick around till the end of the video do yourself a favor and see how the transformation of the old bass boat goes here at Bass Motorsports she's going to turn out like a new one you know, I still remember when I got this boat, and even in one of my other videos when we were test driving it on the lake, I said, oh man, this will be easy because it's so small compared to the other boats I'm used to messing with. You know, I do a lot of custom interiors in big boats, and I said, well, this will be easy. I'm going to tell you right now, there's nothing easy about this job, so please don't mistake me on that, thinking it's something simple. Now, saying you can do it or not, that's up to you on 
your abilities, but don't think it's going to be anything quick and easy because there's nothing quick and easy about it. But anyway, one of the biggest headaches is going around and scraping everything. You got to scrape every surface anywhere that the glue and the carpet was because the glue has to be able to stick and you got to wrap the carpet around all these edges. And I want it to be nice and tight on all these. We're going to have it wrapped around everything nice and tight, every little uh, edge. And so there's a lot of edges in a bass boat and a lot of panels that I had to take out, me and my dad. Some of them are riveted, some are screwed. So it is a big job, but we're working on it. We're getting her knocked out. Now we're just putting a thin layer of this glue on indoor outdoor carpet glue and we're using the little trowels with the uh, little teeth in it and that way we can get it spread out good we'll make it nice and thinner when we actually get it all on there and then she'll be ready to flip over on the carpet and cut it out and wrap it and staple it Jasper what's up boy all right, today we're out here doing some more carpet, and Jasper's really being a big help. So I went ahead and uh, did these inside pieces, and that way those really have to be done first because now all the side panels and stuff will start going in. This had to be done. I still got to cut out the little area here because this is the rod locker here or the long section of it, so I gotta cut that and wrap it, and then the rod locker will be inside here. Got my carpet cut out for back here. I didn't glue it yet. I was just getting the rough idea, and I went ahead and trimmed mine here to relieve it because the cables and stuff, you know, it's not going back that far anyway, but it was messing with this part back here. Some boats stop in this area. Uh, this particular one has these triangles shapes back here so I did the big relief there plus I didn't want to waste that because to be honest I'm pretty tight on the carpet I'm gonna have to go get about two more yards I'll show you in a minute in the garage there because you can't just cut this out and use it on the hatch this piece gets wasted on all these uh, hatch holes so that's why I went ahead and saved that big piece because it will do a locker lid matter of fact it's gonna do that locker lid there so i'm a little short i got to get enough carpet to do this front strip and my console is over there on the ground i'll show you i laid everything out that's why i wanted to cut my big three pieces of flooring out on the out of the carpet because i want everything going the right direction from front to back so now i numbered and put an arrow on each piece and everything's actually facing this way but there's that piece that i saved near the engine but uh i went ahead and traced everything with chalk and again i put the numbers transferred the number onto the actual piece like this is number two facing forward and what i did was this is probably going to make it a little trickier to glue it because you don't have any leeway uh, you want to have a lot of excess hanging and then once you glue the middle section the main part Then you can come back and trim the outside where you want it because it has to fold all the way over here and get glued onto the inside So what I did was I just made a chalk mark all the way around the outside edges So when I'm gluing it, I'm only going to glue inside that chalk area and when we lay it down boom We'll be able to get it nice and and close and then this where I'm actually cutting in between the pieces is going to be pretty close I might have to do a little fine trimming but I think I'll be all right and uh, as you can see I got them all laid out I'm about to start cutting those out but like I said I need about probably two more yards because I still got to do that piece which is under the seats and I got a couple the console and stuff like that out there so I don't mind having a little excess. I should have bought more. All right, now I'm going to rebuild the, or not rebuild, but redo the front of the gauge cluster and replace the speedometer because for whatever reason, that one 
took the sun, the weather really got it. So I've got a new one. Should be here today, actually. But uh, just got a picture of all my wiring, so I know where everything goes back in. I know these are just regular uh, push pins that from the front side you should be able to take a uh, clip tool and stick it in here and pop it out but it's popping all the heads off of them so I'm just going around with the chisel and sticking it on like this taking a hammer and popping them off and then I'm going to come back with uh, either wood glue and sawdust or a little fiberglass resin or something to fill these holes and then when I repaint or cover these whatever I decide to do I'm just going to use nice little screws on the front to go back into and make new holes on this back side. Alright, so I got them all popped off on the back. Luckily, it come right loose. Now I can clean everything up real good. I noticed somebody's already painted it black before because it was wood grain originally. So I'm not sure when that would have gotten done. Um, I can even see under that clip there, there's wood grain style so I don't know if that was done at the factory or what's going on there but anyway and yes whenever you're customized doing custom work stuff like that uh, it's not always going to go as planned so breaking the clips that's what we had to do on this one you got to imp improvise sometimes overcome and adapt you know what I mean all right so as you can see she's pretty nasty i can't leave it like that when i got the rest of the boat looking so good that's just me i want it to be a restored boat so anyway i think i'm gonna go grab a scuff pad real quick got some purple power in my sprayer scuff them up real good get them clean and i'm probably just gonna prime them and paint them and clear them Oh yeah, I am pretty glad now that I did her like that, going black with the console, and now when I put the silver pieces in, I'll show you them in a second, with the nice gauges in there all cleaned up, it's going to make them all stand out because they got the black ring around them, oh she's shining, and now I got the new sticker kit, the mercury stickers to go on there hello nice and shiny I like it I like it then that's the uh, new gauge and switch and ignition nice and shiny got them cleared so now when that dries and then I put them nice they're like a metallic silver actually put them over there Boom! It's gonna be looking good, y'all. Oh yeah, I'll paint it up. What you think, Jasper? Huh? Got the new sticker kit. She looking right. Looking like a new motor. Jasper! This shop dog at Vast Motorsports. Thanks for hanging around, Jasper, and helping me out with everything. All right, today I'm putting all the gauges back in. It's pretty simple. Just to uh, get a picture of where everything goes and the wires on the back before you disassemble it. Pretty much just drop them in the hole there in the new painted panel. And the bracket just goes on the back side here. Kind of hard to do with one hand, so I'm going to put this down, but you get the idea. All right, and I got my brand new speedometer replacement. It's factory new old stock from eBay for $30 shipped to the door. I mean, you can't beat that. Boy, I love eBay. That's why it's my favorite. Got the steering wheel all primed up and ready to paint. Gonna have her looking good. All right, I went ahead and painted and cleared the steering wheel i figure what the heck if you're going to restore something you might as well do it right and make it look good so i used the automotive clear and sprayed it with my gun as the center cap uh i had to untape it to show the emblem but we're going to let that stuff dry 
and we will have a nice steering wheel on the finished boat all right i'm getting her on tape i think she's gonna turn out pretty good i don't know y'all it's just me but i love repurposing something that looked like garbage and was trash and make it look like new again or maybe even better all right and i went ahead and ordered these seats off ebay for it uh because they were so cheap <laughs> as far as price but they're a pretty nice seat they're actually decent and uh it's a whole lot easier than me spending a, a week on trying to redo the other seats that were in it because they were a very difficult design in the pattern and the way the foam and everything was cut so I just went ahead and ordered these. I'm pretty happy with them. The only thing is I'm kind of a perfectionist. So what I'm doing is I'm going along and I don't like how this looks on these two uh, that are on the posts. You can't really see it on these because they're bolted down to the floor. But these two that are on the post front and back, I'm just not real happy with how they have this. So what I did is I went around and put staples closer to the edge and that way I can come back. I took their staples out. I'm cutting this along the edge here and I'm putting the hide them on. So it'll be like this. And that way it's a nice finished look. Even though it's on the underside, I've already done this one. Just gives it a nice cleaner look. That way you don't see uh, the edge of the fabric hanging down and stuff. Like if you turn around, you're sitting in the seat there and you turn around. Most people would never see that. Like I said, I'm just a fanatic with this kind of stuff. I like it looking right, so you can't really see it, but that's to hide them going down through there. Gives it a much cleaner, more professional look. All right, now that's the front one done. A lot better, so much better. It's just a nice finished look now. There's no material hanging all down and stapled and all that crap. And then I also had to do a little adjustment on that uh, snap there because you couldn't even snap this on there or, uh, a while ago, you know, to keep the strap out of the way when you're using the actual seat. So I adjusted that. Now it works good. All right. I'm happy with her. And like I said, there's little touches that nobody would notice, but that's just me. All right, so I finally got the batteries in the way I wanted. I got the starting battery, little group 24 sitting in here. And I had to change the direction of the trolling motor battery because I stuck a 29 in here. And the tray was going sideways before, and it was only big enough for a 27. I wanted the 29, so I cut the end off of it and turned it this way. Uh, got it close enough to the wall where it's not it's got a little movement, but it's not gonna slide And I got the negative up that end anyway in case something did touch which it's not got the strap and all on uh, Got all my terminals nice and tight and clean I took a wire wheel on the drill and clean up all my terminal ends uh, before I stuck them on and I've also got the uh, guest charger so now what I'm going to go ahead and do, I've got the plug installed here and all the way I wanted it. So I'm going to go ahead and take the voltmeter, check the state of the batteries right now, which they should be close to fully charged. They've been sitting for a little while and I have been using this one, messing around with the lights and stuff like that on the boat to make sure that I had the uh, switch panel. I, I had to rewire and make sure all my switches were correct. So now I'm going to check the state of the batteries. They're probably sitting around 12 and a half or so. And then I'm going to go ahead and plug in the charger and make sure that both of them start rising up. And that way I know they're charging correctly. All right, so we are sitting 12.6 and 12.5. I went ahead and plug, plugged in the extension. And I like that right here at the back of the boat because even when I have the boat cover on, I'll be able to just easily pick this one corner up, reach over with the extension, plug it in, put the cover back down, and then the batteries are going to stay fully charged and maintained. Let's see what we got here. 
yeah you can see the red and green light that's showing that it is power and it is charging um, let me go ahead and check these out real quick and see if the voltage jumped up a little tell me it's charging good deal good deal she's charged and this one's already 13 one and that was 12 nine it's only been a couple seconds I had to turn the phone off just long enough to lay it down and use both hands for the uh, terminals to check it so as the batteries uh, get fully charged the uh, maintainer will just top off and maintain the batteries so all right we're getting closer and closer folks should be going down to Florida anytime now and we're gonna run her around and try her out so stick around for that video too of the finished product Woohoo! now I'm going around and hit my seats with the vinyl guard I tell you I love this stuff makes them nice and shiny that's just the way I am. I like my stuff shiny. Even uh, my cars and trucks are always armor all everything. Some people don't like that. I love it. To me, it makes it look new. But with the vinyl guard here, the good thing is, especially with these being light colored seats, it really does protect it. It not only conditions it and helps add a little UV protection, but this way, if you're a little bit dirty and you get a little scuff or uh, something like that or a little dirt line on the seats this really does help protect it it'll come off so much easier compared to actually staining the material but anyway that's just me I like my stuff looking good so I'm gonna go around and protect all of them real quick all right since I'm uh, going to Florida with her I want this done anyway but I went ahead and made a new bunk board on this side to guide because it was missing altogether. I'm not sure, I guess it just rotted off. And of course, I got a new pressure treated and I'm using the same carpet from inside. So she'll match. So when I get back from Florida, I'm gonna go ahead and do these other couple pieces of wood. It's got two on each side and re-carpet them with the nice matching carpet. I like her being right, y'all. All right, that day has come. I finally got her all finished up. It's been a project, which I didn't stay on a full time, but she is done. I went ahead and put all new seats. There's all new carpet throughout, as you've seen in the other video, or the build video. Got the new wood under here, wood under here, everything else, aluminum, painted the console pretty much got all new seats throughout new carpet everywhere even in here i went ahead and did this put my little chains on instead of straps to hold it all these are finished all the way through nice and clean 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 i even put down to the finest little detail of putting a snap here because the way these are bolted down to the floor you can't just snap it like these are made to where you can bring it around and snap under here but these were bolted down so you couldn't do that and they were just hanging i don't like that i want every little thing to be as good as i can get her and she has come a long way the good old motor which is a very low hour motor because as you can see Skeg ain't chipped. It's not even really the paint ain't even wore off of it or nothing. The prop and all looks new. I know somebody could replace the prop, but that skeg ain't replacing. So we're in good shape there. The only thing I did was cut, uh, painted that housing cover because it was all faded and the stickers were crap. So I went ahead and put the new sticker kit decals. Tell you what, she has come a long way. She's got the dash all finished up. The steering wheel painted, the dash and gauges all looking good, everything painted and cleaned up, polished up. Got Dave to make me a nice sticker here, another tracker on it. <laughs> I want it all detailed. Got the nice hook reveal, seven. Yeah, looking good, looking good. So, if you don't mind, how about like and subscribe to the Vast Motorsports channel. You'll be able to check out all the builds I do. 
I do a lot of nice custom stuff to boats, cars, trucks, bikes, pretty much anything. Got a motor on it. I don't care if it's a golf cart. But uh, she has definitely come a long way from what she was. <laughs> Got day to make me a few of the Vast Motorsports. New tires on the trailer. Every step, I don't care what it was. I made sure she is right. Went ahead and installed my nice little LEDs on the front, the nav lights. Got the two foot long strips on each side, the red and the green. That looks good at night, I'll tell you. I love it. It does have the little stand light that comes right here. The only thing I don't like about them is when you are looking straight on, it almost looks clear where the red and the green lens comes together. They always look real clear, and so you really can't tell which way the boat is going at night across the water if you're someone else looking at the boat. So I really do like those strip lights. Got it behind the old dually here. Not that you need that to be pulling it, but we're going to be heading out to Florida in the morning. Put her to the test. So I'll have a video or two on all that. We're going to be doing some island jumping. Probably get Alex to take us out fishing. Please, Alex, take us out fishing, or we'll take you out fishing. <laughs> I'll tell you what, she is good at it. Definitely knows what she's doing. She'll pull in some big ones. I just had to get up here and do another little walk around. I'm impressed, y'all. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to brag. I'm just amazed at what she is turned into from what she was you know and like I said the good thing is it was a low hour boat very little usage is just as you could see the weather mother nature is its worst enemy I'm gonna tell you right now if you don't keep them covered keep them inside if you just leave them out in the rain and the Sun and whatever weather it destroys them so I do have a really nice cover and all I'll be keeping on it. So that's a very good thing. That way she stays protected with all the new interior. Thanks again, y'all.